We know that we as a society are better than this. We know that hatred will never win out, that those that try to divide us because of the way that we pray or where our families are from around the world will lose. That was the mayor of Pittsburgh speaking there. Now many of us may assume that anti-Semitism is a problem for our neighbors to the south, but our next Canadian guest proved that is not the case. Merle Cates is the executive director of Stand With Us Canada. Daniel Korn is with B'nai B'rith Canada. Both groups exist to educate and eliminate hatred towards Jews here at home. Nice to see you both. Thank you. Thank you. Merle, let's start with you. I know your organization really targets university students through education. Do you find anti-Semitism is alive and well with, with that younger generation? Yes, unfortunately, we, we do. We find it on campuses. We find it in high schools. Um, it, it's not that it's pervasive. We're fortunate in Canada. But there is an impression that uh, Israel is being misrepresented in a way that the Jews are being targeted in what we're calling a new anti-Semitism mm -hmm. that we see in Europe, the UK, and the US, and in Canada as well. So, Merle, you call it a new anti-Semitism. What exactly does that mean? Mm -hmm. It means that it's really a uh, hatred for Israel uh, that doesn't allow for any theories of coexistence or peace or tolerance, and it has morphed into um, a hatred for Jews mm -hmm. on the far left and the far right. Okay. And that's why we try to reach out to non-Jews to educate them. Daniel, I know your organization has been looking at trends of anti-Semitic behavior across the country. Give us an idea of, of how bad it is out there. Uh, well, it, it hasn't been great as of late. Uh, our organization puts out an annual audit of anti-Semitic incidents. It is the authoritative document on anti-Semitism in Canada used by police services, uh, government bodies, NGOs across the country. Uh, we've noted a five-year uptick in anti-Semitic incidents uh, over the past five years. And for the last two years, um, we've recorded the worst record of anti-Semitic incidents for the years 2016 and then for the year 2017 uh, since we've started compiling this audit in 1982. Hmm. Uh, most problematic would say for the year 2017, there was a 107% increase in terms of anti-Semitic vandalism. And the types of things we've seen, uh, you know, scare the members of our Jewish community to the core. You know, things like jury must perish and Heil Hitler and Jews did 9-11, uh, swastikas galore. These are the types of things we're seeing, as Marilyn mentioned, too, at, at high schools, at elementary schools, on university campuses, and uh, across the country. Happening in Canada, which is known for multiculturalism, openness, uh, and love. Uh, I always Absolutely. wonder how those incidents affect a Jewish person on a, a daily basis. So, Merle, give me an idea. As a Jewish woman walking around Canada, uh, I know you travel extensively as well, uh, do you feel, do you feel uh, ill will towards you? No, not necessarily. I feel perfectly safe, actually. I, and you're right, I do travel extensively. And I feel safe everywhere. I guess that's many trips to Israel that has made me uh, understand security. And I know that we do have security. Our problem is, as Daniel was saying, with the kind of rise in graffiti and ugliness and, and hatred we're seeing, even in Jewish elementary schools, we have to now have security at every place of worship, every Jewish school, every Jewish center. Uh, and that's something that worries me. It's something some of us call the Jewish tax. And um, as a very small minority, that's something that's really difficult to yeah. be able to manage. Yeah, we see that in the States. President Trump musing about arming uh, all types of religious institutions after something like this. Uh, Daniel, uh, we are a very diverse, multicultural country. How can people of, of different backgrounds, different faiths, help the Jewish community after something like this? Well, that's a great question. Uh, our organization actually has an eight-point plan to tackle anti-Semitism, and it's something we've been pushing um, across the country. Um, in Montreal, for example, they've created a hate crimes unit, which has been very effective in uh, identifying and targeting the purveyors of hatred, be then anti-Semitic, anti-Muslim, anti uh, anti-Black, anti-gay, etc. Uh, most recently, there was a man in Montreal just last week by the name of Robert Gosselin. Merle, I'm sure you've heard all about this, 
where um, the hate crimes unit found out swiftly and quickly that he was promoting anti-Semitism and charged him immediately uh, with willful promotion of hatred. And now he's no longer able to promote any type of this uh, anti-Jewish uh, and anti-Semitic uh, tropes that we've been seeing. He's no longer able to promote these. Now, if we had a hate crimes unit in every major city across Canada, this would better enable our um, police services to identify anti-Semitism and and um, bring to justice the purveyors of said anti-Semitism before it could escalate. Merle, quickly. And that's just one of the eight points. Okay, Merle, quickly, what needs to change? I completely agree, but I also believe that we need to be able to support, one, our Jewish students, both in high school and on campuses, by providing them with the tools that they can have a conversation about being Jewish, about Israel, about supporting a Jewish homeland, and on campuses, because there has been such a drive to try to isolate and demonize Israel. And I know that that's had an effect on the rise in anti-Semitism. So we support them and we try to educate the 80% that really doesn't know anything about the Middle East. Um, we need all of it. All right. We'll leave it there, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks Thank for having you. Me. Merle Cates with Stand With Us Canada, Daniel Corrin with B'nai B'rith, both from Toronto today.